All right, well, welcome. This is uh, sports reporting. It used to be called sports writing, um, and it was really focused on learning how to write for newspapers, maybe magazines a little bit, a touch of PR and a touch of broadcasting. As we got into it, um, looking at the media landscape and how things changed, we wanted to change the name to sports reporting to better reflect what it actually is. Because yes, you will be doing a lot of writing in this class, but it is more about learning how to report on sports, okay? Um, for those of you who are just getting to know me, again, my name is Joe Moore. I am with the professor for this class. I oversee our sport communication minor. That was my baby. That was one of my graduate projects when I was working on my PhD to create a minor um, in a curriculum development class that I had. So I created the sport communication minor. I monitor that, oversee that, and take care of all the ins and outs of it. Um, for those of you who don't know my background, before I started teaching here, I spent 15 years as a college sports public relations director, um, more commonly known sports information director. They're trying to get away from that because when you say sports information director, people think, what? You're the statistician. You're the guy that keeps all the stats the game, which I did, but there's a lot more to that job than that, so they worked on changing the name. Uh, before I did that, while I was in college, I spent four years as a sports writer for the Sedalia Democrat. Uh, I was string, I worked as the assistant sports editor for the Neil Skinner, and then I was a stringer for them. Uh, played football here for UCM. Um, my last four years before I started teaching, I was the media relations director here at the university. So sports is in my blood, it's in my background. Now, if we want to sit down and talk about professional sports and who's in the NBA finals and who played in the NHL and Anything in Major League Baseball, those types of things. I'm gonna be honest with you. You'll have it all over me, okay? Because as a professor, I don't get to watch as much sports as I would like to. Um, I don't watch much golf. Don't watch any bowling. Don't watch auto racing. You know, I try and keep up with it as much as I can. I subscribe to ESPN Magazine. I subscribe to Sports Illustrated. I watch ESPN every chance my wife gives me. Um, I watch the Kansas City Royals. I watch the Kansas City Chiefs. I watch my teams. So I am probably not as steep in overall sports today as you are, or as many of you are. That's okay, all right? Um, it's good that you are getting that deep into it and following it that closely because you have more understanding of it. It helps you understand the language. And so that's part of what we're going to be talking about this semester. All right. I love that I love sport just simply for the competition aspect, for uh, how it brings people together, how it starts com uh, conversations. You two came in, the first thing you started talking about, did you see the fight yesterday? Yeah. It, it starts these conversations. It gets us talking about different stuff. Politics works its way into sports. Religion works its way into sports. Business child rearing, bringing up kids. I have three kids, one of them is into sports, the other two are into dance and theater. I coach the one who plays, I coach his soccer team, I'm the assistant coach on his baseball team. So we get to have all kinds of conversations about what are we doing with our kids in sport. Should they be playing competitive? Should they be playing parks and rec? When, if they should be playing parks and rec, when should they be playing competitive? How much is too much? How much should you put into it? It gets good conversations going and it really permeates every part of our background. So that's what I love about it. That's why I got into it. My question is, why are you here? Why are you interested in covering sports and learning to be a sports reporter? And that's not a rhetorical. This is the discussion part of the class. Matthew, why are you here? I know you're big into it. I got to Because you are right there. He's right there. She's right there. But all right, I'll go. Um, the reason I'm into sports is because, well, I'm an added sports watcher because there's really nothing any more good to me. I don't know if it makes sense, but. No, it makes perfect sense. There's not a whole lot good on TV. <laughs> uh, I just like watching continuous motion and just like watching my favorite teams like the Jayhawks and I guess the Royals. Allison, what about you? Why are you here? Um, I've grown up. I 
many of you are big followers of ESPN, whether it's on Twitter, Facebook, watching, subscribing, listening to the radio? Okay. So you're getting an idea about what it is about sports that, that you like and what you want to report on. I will tell you, for the longest time, when I was working on my master's thesis, when I was working on my doctoral dissertation, I tried to think of something more highbrow. What could I be writing about? What could I be researching that would make more of an impact in the world? And I tried, and I could not get excited about it. And I had to tell <coughs> myself and realize, you know, sport's important. In our culture, sport is important. We're going to talk a little more in class today about sport and society and the impact that it has, not just in the United States, but in the world. It's big business, and it's important to people. And so don't apologize for it. There's been a lot of talk about that sport is the toy department of the newspaper or of the television news. Because, yeah, it's sports. You know, what, what's the big point? Well, I'm going to give you some numbers here in a little bit, and you're going to find out what the point is and why it's important. Okay, so don't apologize for it. If you're passionate about sports, you want to write about it, you want to broadcast it, good on you. Take pride in that. It's important. Okay? Uh, I want to talk a little bit. Here's kind of how the class is going to go today. We're going to talk about how this class is going to work this summer. Uh, we're going to take a tour through Blackboard because that is where we're going to be doing a lot of our stuff since this is a hybrid class. How many of you have gotten onto our Blackboard site and looked around a little bit? Okay. Good. Well, we're going to get more in depth into that and I'll explain some things. We'll go through the syllabus. We're going to take a quick break. We'll come back. And we've got four things to talk about today. Sports society, uh, why you want to be a sports reporter and what, what it takes. And then each week we're going to have a focus on one or two sports. This week it's football and volleyball. And I'll tell you why we're doing that and why this is a sports reporting class, not just sports writing. We talk to a lot of professionals. Kevin Shank, who is the, one of the producers for American Sports Network, used to work with the Kansas City Royals. Used to work with, I think it was the Minnesota Twins, worked with ESPN Midwest, with Fox Midwest. Uh, we've talked with Brian Burns, who's one of our graduates, who used to be the executive vice president at ESPN. Mark Grant came to campus. He is a producer and director for CBS College Sports. Talked to some of other, our other graduates who are now working in the industry. And they have all told us that if you want to get into sports, learn sports, learn how to cover them, because We'll give you the basics, for example, of doing a live production, of live sports broadcast. We'll give you the basics of that. We'll give you as big of a system as we can provide how to cover it, okay? They say when they get to our place, we'll teach them our equipment. We'll teach them how we want the system done. But if they don't know sports, that's going to be a struggle. We'd rather them know sports and have to learn how to cover than know how to cover and not know anything about sports, okay? So that's a lot of what this class is going to be about. All right? Okay, so the way this class is going to work is on Mondays we will meet and we'll discuss whatever those topics are going to be for that week. The class is scheduled to meet from 9.30 to 11.20. It may, may not go that long. I'm hoping that it does simply because you guys get excited about it and want to talk and ask questions and share your insights. But if it doesn't, I'm not going to keep you here till 11.20 just to keep you here for two hours. Okay, so that's what we'll do on Mondays. Um, you'll go online for your assignments for the week. I will tell you there's going to be a lot of assignments because it's a hybrid class. You have to dig in and practice what it is we're talking about. There's some blog, a blog assignment. There's some discussion board posts. There's things like that that I want to get you thinking, get you doing some research and digging in to learn more about different sports, how you talk about different sports, and to start thinking critically, okay? Um, I will maintain office hours from 9.30 to 11.20, roughly, somewhere in there, Monday through Thursday during this session, during the six-week session, so that if you want to pop in and see me and talk about something, if you want to email me, if you want to give me a phone call, if I'll have my email up, so if you want to IM through Google, we can do that, okay? Those of you who are online, um, I'll be posting the video after class. I'll be putting slides to that video and lay that out there for you as soon as we get done with class. If you have questions, you still can give me a call, okay? Um, the assignments that I am giving you, they're intended to be fun. So have fun with them. Don't think of them as drudgery, all right? They're meant to get you really steeped into it. I mean, we're talking sports. It's supposed to be fun. A lot of the assignments you're going to be doing are watching sports and then reporting on it. 
Let's see, what else do I want to talk about? I'm also going to be working this week on our tour schedule. I do want to take you all up to Kansas City to some sports outlets. Um, I already know 610 and 810, we're good with them. We just got to get them scheduled. Time Warner Cable Sports, we're good with them. KNBC, same thing. I want to try and get up with a couple of professional sports teams. I know Bob Moore, who's the former PR director and is now the historian for the Kansas City Chiefs. I need to get in touch with him and see if we can get something scheduled. Maybe with Sporting KC, might be with the T-Bones. We will probably not get to go up to Kansas City Royals because they're in season. And so that makes it really difficult to get in there with them. But a couple of years ago, we got rained out both times we were going to go up. We were going to get to go to two Kansas City T-Bones games see their facility, go down on the field, actually get to interview their players before the game, and then go sit up in their press box during the game and see what it's actually like. Both games got rained out, so we didn't get to do it. So we're going to maybe try that again. But I'll get that scheduled together. Again, those tours are not required. It's encouraged. I'd love to have as many people go as possible, but it's not required because it's required to be here on Mondays for class and then online. All right, and I know you have work schedules. Okay? Any questions so far about how the class is working? Asia is actually not taking the class. She is auditing the class because she wanted to find out a little bit more about it. I think you're, she's leaving for her internship before the class is over. So um, she'll be following us doing the online system. So. Okay, let's real quickly uh, do a tour through Blackboard. Okay, so if you've been through here, you've seen the home page. If I have announcements or anything like that to post on the home page, this is where they'll be. I really don't use that very much. I use email. Um, I will ask for your cell phone numbers if I can get them, if you feel like sharing them, or when we do the tours, if there's an issue, we can get in touch. I'll give you mine, too. I will share that. So um, I do a lot of, I ask the people that have had me for sports broadcast, and I do a lot of texting and making, sending messages that way, because this class isn't like a typical class. We don't just sit around in the classroom. We get out into the field and we do our work out there. Okay. Uh, welcome to sports, let's just say sports reporting. <coughs> I updated this and it didn't update. That's weird. I'll have to go back and look at that. This kind of tells you what our, cl our class objectives are, uh, what we're planning to learn this semester. Be able to gather information to write sports stories for print and broadcast, including game coverage, features, and advances. Um, when you're assessed, you'll be able to uh, score at least 75 point, or 75 percent on an AP style test that's focused on sports. Um, these two actually got mixed to, uh, put together. The AP style test is there some writing that you're going to have to do, even if you're going to broadcasting. If you become a broadcast sports reporter and you go out and you shoot packages at a Chiefs game you are likely going to have to come back to the station and write for the website. And on that website, you will use AP style, okay? This is different from a print style. It's a different language from many of you. That's why you're required to take writing across the media before you take this class, because we talk a lot about AP style, okay? But I'll be giving you some information that's focused on AP style for sports to use for this class, okay? Uh, you'll also be getting some information about different rules, for writing about sports, um, different styles, different methods for writing sports, different um, terminology when it comes to sport, all that will go together. Okay. Given basic information, you'll learn how to craft a highlight package for a sporting event. I'm still working in my brain how I want to do that. I think what I'm going to do is give you a series of video clips and some notes about each one of those clips and some notes about how the game turned out. And you have to tell me if you're good, if you know how to use a video, a video editing software and you want to go ahead and edit the package and then give me the script, that's great. If you want to just say, I would use clip one here, clip two here, clip four here, clip seven here, I wouldn't use clip two. Um, and then write the script, we can do it that way too. I'm still trying to work out how I want to work that one out though. Uh, when provided information, students will be able to write a three to five minute sports newscast script. Students will be able to use good news judgment to produce topics and content for a 30-minute sports talk show. And then when provided information, students will be able to develop a flip card for coverage of a live sporting event. So you're going to pretend like you're the play-by-play -play and or color commentator. And how are you going to have your notes and everything ready for when you do that game? Okay? So that's what our goal is this semester. Those are our objectives, uh, what we'll be working toward. And 
all of our assignments will center on that. Because keep in mind, what do you think about when you hear the word sports reporter? What do you think about, Morgan? People that you see on TV, like reporting, interviewing the athletes and stuff. So, like during the television news? Yeah. Okay. What do you think about? There's a liaison between the public and the professional team. Okay. How about you? When you guys are thinking about the same thing, she would just, when you uh, watch the games, like the sideline reporters do when you have to watch two players. Okay. Any other different ones? Newspaper. Okay. That's where my mind goes just because that's my background because I was a sports reporter. All right. But you think about the guys on 610 Sports that do the talk shows. Uh, you think about Tony Kornheiser and um, Mike Wolf, um, Wolf, Wilbon on uh, PTI on ESPN. They're sports reporters. A sports reporter is anybody who is providing information about the sports, whether it's for a newspaper, whether it's for a magazine, whether it's for a sports talk radio show whether it is the evening news report, whether it's the sideline report. If you're a play-by-play or color, you're a sports reporter. Why? Because you're telling the story of this game as it unfolds. That's all encompassed in sports reporting, and so we're gonna hit on all of that in this class, okay? Uh, syllabus. It's here under the syllabus tab, so take a look at that. We'll talk about it here a little bit more in just a minute. There is, under assignments, a test for the syllabus that is due by Sunday. This is our contract, all right? You need to go through the syllabus, make sure you understand it, make sure the expectations for you, and then go take that test. Because that's what I'm gonna expect out of you, and that's what you can expect out of me. I cannot now think, oh, dang it, and I thought about this last night. I wanted to add something. I wanted, there was another assignment, another practice I wanted them to do, and I forgot to put it in the syllabus. But I'd already posted it on the syllabus. I'd already made it active. That's our contract. I can't go in and add an assignment to you now. All right? I won't do that. But that's our contract with one another. So after we go through the syllabus, I want you then to go into um, the assignments tab and take that test, okay? Of course, PowerPoints are arranged, so you see there's six weeks. These will be our lessons, one through six. Uh, those of you online, this is where I'll post the links to the videos. Um, but each week, I'll have what are our discussion points for that week? What PowerPoints will I be going over? I use PowerPoints a lot on Blackboard, um, and I use them during my course lectures just to kind of give me a starting point. Good tip for you guys, if you want to print them out, and then you can take notes on those PowerPoints while we're discussing. I know, how many of you take notes in class anymore? Yeah, not many. I, I, I see a whole lot of this. It's more of the, no you don't. Mm -hmm. I watch, you know, I see people aren't taking notes. Well, you put everything online. Yeah, that doesn't really help you after you get out of class, so. Uh, but if you look on, this is week one, so you can see these are the discussions for this week. We're going to talk about sports society, becoming a sports reporter. Um, I've got a, a, a Word doc that I'll bring up on the AP Sports Editor's Code of Ethics. That's very important for us. And then our sports focus for each week. This week will be football and volleyball. So that's where you'll be able to find those if you want to go back. Um, the assessments that you'll be doing, your sports focus assessment, they're open note, obviously, if you're not taking them in here. Be a good place to start. Another good place to start, if you haven't gotten the book, get the book. This book is fantastic. This is one of the best books I've read for any class I teach as far as the content it provides. There's exercises in the back that you can do. I pull a couple of exercises from this book. I've actually met Joe, Joe DeSandi at a conference I went to, super guy. Um, we talked a little bit, so if you've used it, what would you recommend that I add to it? I said a little bit about broadcasting in this latest edition. There's a little bit about broadcasting. So, get the book, okay? Next up is the assignments tab. Um, this is where you, I'll have all the descriptions about the different assignments. So you see there's your syllabus test. The sports focus for football and volleyball are both active. You have some information about the blog assignment that you'll be doing. And then under each of these tabs, today I'll make the assignment for covering the event there's the description about covering the event, 
but then there's also an example. So for each of the, the larger assignments I give you, I'm giving you the assignment and explaining it, but I'm also giving you an example of one from the past. Now this is one that I've graded, I've taken the student's name off of it, so you may see my comments on the side. If you send assignments in in Word, well, don't if. Do, all your assignments that you, uh, you submit are due to me in a Word document, okay, with your name and the assignment at the top. All right. If I make comments going through Word and email those back to you, can everybody read those okay? I've had other classes where people couldn't read the comments. Mm -hmm. Can you read those okay? You can't, Asia? Mm -hmm. You talking about like the comments on the side and stuff? Yeah. You can't read them. You can't read yours? Mm -hmm. Anybody else have that problem? Nobody else is having that issue? Okay. I'm not sure. It's like a sporadic thing. If you can't, let me know. Because I will not give you, do your a grade your assignment, give you a grade, and send it back with no comments. That's pointless. Okay, I make a lot of comments. I'm gonna give you a lot of feedback because that's the only way you're gonna learn this stuff. Okay, I will tell you that I will make a lot of comments. I don't grade necessarily just brutally hard because you get one crack at most of these, and it's not really fair for me to just nail you to the wall because you didn't do it exactly right, and you don't get to do, get a second chance at it. But I, there are certain things that I will grade hard on. Spelling, punctuation, grammar, those are big things. Style will work through, okay? All right. Um, each week, you'll be doing a discussion board post. For those of you who come to class, obviously, I see you in class. For those of you doing the class online, this is how you get your participation points. You have to do the discussion board post. That's how I know you're engaged, that you're involved, okay? now. You have to do discussion board posts too, okay? Uh, but each week it's kind of a topic about what we're addressing. So like you'll see for today, who should pay? That's our topic for this week. Town's building a new football stadium. Who should pay for it? Should it be the taxpayers? Should it be the ownership? Should it be a combination? And why? These are some of the topics we get to thinking about and talking about as sports reporters. I want you to start thinking about it, all right? Generally going to be, you see there, 250 to 300 words. That's not a lot, but I do want 250 to 300 words. I don't want just, yeah, the taxpayer should pay. They're the ones benefiting from it. Or the ownership should pay. It's their team. Give me some thought. Give me some meat. Give me some detail. Okay? These will be done. You'll have one of these per week. And finally, the blogs will be under tools. Go ahead and go to the blogs. Some of you already have started a blog. Some of you had me for right across the media and you did a blog for me for that class. That's great. Um, but part of that assignment was you had to have a certain audience and a certain topic that you covered and so you wrote based on that. That's not how this one's working, okay? I don't want you to go create your own blog to talk about these things. Um, this is just for this class. So you'll come in here to the blog on, on a Blackboard, click on the link, and then you can enter there, okay? Again, I am looking, as with, your or as with your assignments, with your discussion board and your blogs, I want good grammar, I want good spelling, I want good punctuation. That is how you build your credibility, okay? I want you to use AP style for these things that you're writing for, for online or print. That's how you build credibility, is by using good grammar, good basics of writing, okay? Let's face it, as sports reporters, you're fighting an uphill battle for credibility with the larger society anyway, who think it's sports, it's not politics, it's not education, it's not health, it's just as important, okay? So make sure you focus on those things. The blog assignment, this again goes back to learning more about sports. I want you to pick one of the two topics for that week. And again, this if you go to assignments, this is all written out in the blog assignment. You pick one of the two sports we talk about for that week, okay? I want you to take any topic you want and do some research about it. You have to give me three sources. They have to be cited in text and give me some references at the end of it, all right? Wikipedia, not a source. You can use it, but it's not counted as one of your three, okay? Go to Wikipedia, get some basic information, and then use Wikipedia sources and go to those, all right? But I want any topic of, of interest at all. I'm gonna go ahead and do this too, okay? My first blog, I'm going to write about football. I'm going to write about the Pro Football Hall of Fame. How it came to be, how you get inducted, that sort of thing. 
You may decide I want to do mine on volleyball and the evolution of volleyball. You may decide I want to do mine on um, sexism in volleyball and how men's beach volleyball, women's beach volleyball is covered differently. It doesn't have to be anything really in depth. I'm looking for about 750 to 1,000 words, I think is what I posted on there on the assignment, which is a longer assignment, but it's not a full length research paper. Okay. I just want you guys to start digging in and learning more. Make sense? Okay. All right. Let's go through the syllabus real quickly. Okay, you can see my contact information here at the top. I am in Martin 136B. My phone number is right here, my email. So if you need to get in touch with me, get in touch with me. <coughs> you see our textbook, Joe Jasandi's Field Guide to Covering Sports. Again, fantastic book. If you haven't gotten it, get it. Um, you also need to get a style book. I, I'm still using the 2009 because I subscribe to AP Style Online. So if I really have a big question, I'll go online. I think it's 25 bucks for a year. It's a good investment for you because if you are studying digital journalism and digital media production, you'll need the AP style for everything. If you are going to write for the meal skinner, you need to go ahead and get it because you're gonna to have to use AP style. If you want to get a part-time job working for a radio station or a television station or a local newspaper, you have to have AP style, okay? So go ahead and get that. I have a couple other supplemental texts that I use. You do not have to go buy those, but I'll be pulling some stuff from there. Okay. Um, here again is the description for the course and the objectives. Method class is writing intensive in the belief that the more you write, the better you write. Makes sense, doesn't it? Anything. The more you practice, where you're going to be. You're going to be covering events, writing advances, and learning the intricacies of sports. Now. You're covering the event assignment. I've changed from what I've done in the past. In the past, I've said you need to go out to an event and cover it. There's not a whole lot going on in the summertime. And even if there is, it's awfully hard to do any research like you need to to do it well to write it. So what I've done is I pulled one of the assignments from your text. He gives you a couple of examples of sports. He gives you football, baseball, or softball, I can't remember which basketball and he gives you a box score, gives you some quotes, gives you some details from the game, you take that and you write a sports story about it. Okay? I've typed that up on the assignment, so that's what you'll be doing for that one, but we'll talk about that more later. Okay? Um, it's going to be a combination of lecture, PowerPoint presentations, and then the videos that are going to be loaded to Blackboard, so you need to be going through all of that stuff. Your course evaluation be based on the quality of your work, your persistence, um, how detailed you are, how cleanly you write. If you want to share a rough draft with me and say, can you take a look at this? I will be happy to. However, assignments are due by midnight of Sunday, the night they're assigned, the week they're assigned, unless otherwise noted. If you send me a request to look at it on a Friday, it's not gonna get looked at. Because Friday, Saturday, Sunday, I'm out too. Okay. Don't wait till the last minute. Get a head start on these things. Get working on them. I'm going to have, by the end of today, today for sure, maybe the end of the day tomorrow, end of the day today, end of the day tomorrow for sure, have all of your assignments posted on Blackboard. So you can go ahead and take a look at them. Get a start on them. I don't want them until they're due, but go ahead and get a start on them. And then you can come into, when you come to class, um, if you want to email me, if you want to drop in and see me, if you want to call me and say, hey, am I on the right track with this, I will be happy to look those over. You're not going to record a story and send it off to print without a copy editor looking at it. You're not going to be broadcasting it on the news without somebody looking at it. Let me take a look at it if you want me to. Okay, take advantage of that. Um, you're going to be doing three stories. One's a game story. One is a feature story, and one is an advance. What is it, when I say an advance, what do I mean? Pre-game. Hmm? Pre a pre-game story, kind of a preview to the game coming up. What else could it mean? Michael, you've seen a lot of these, and you probably don't even know. Uh, Michael runs cross-country and track work. Yeah. Scouting report? Campaign 
could be a game preview or season preview. So like you'll get the Athlon, um, what is it called? Athlon's Big East preview or uh, SEC preview or whatever, and they preview the teams. Sports Illustrated does its big preseason thing. That's an advance. Okay, that's what you're going to be writing. Uh, you're also you're talk, we're talking about broadcast sports reporting, both, both in the studio and live. So you're going to have a couple of assignments that deal with each of those. One is you're going to be doing the sports cast, a three to five minute sports cast. One will be the um, the highlight package. One will be developing your own sports talk show. And then as far as live, we'll be doing the flip card, so we can talk about doing research. It drives me crazy in my sports broadcasting class when I hound them and hound them and hound them. You can have great voice. You can have great inflection, great delivery. You can really know sports. But if you don't know the two teams that are playing, you're hosed. And if you don't have notes available at a grasp on those teams playing, you're going to give a horrible broadcast. If you're up there and you're looking for a player's number and you're like, oh, it's 37. Um, Joe Moore, because I wore 37, you know, so I had to throw that in there. That's bad, okay? I'll hound my students about this. I will preach this and preach this and preach this. And they'll come up there the day of and grab the game notes and say, okay, and start going through. Professional broadcasters. Guys who have been doing this for generations start on a Sunday for next Sunday's broadcast, not an hour before the game. Okay, so we're going to talk a little bit about how you prepare for that. All right, um, another facet of this the course is to improve your sports knowledge. So you'll have that sports uh, sports focus assignment. Uh, we'll also do the blog and we'll do the discussion board see here how your points break down. How many points are possible? So 910. Breakdown of how much, how many points you need for each grade level. Um, stories be graded on how compelling reporting writing is on accuracy, clarity, sourcing, spelling, punctuation, group, vocabulary, all of that good stuff. Give you an idea of what you need to do on each one, each assignment to get that grade. Participation. You'll learn this class only if you participate on a regular basis. If you do not participate regularly, your ability to learn is going to be hindered. So make sure you are participating. Right now, you're sitting like veal. That's okay. It's just the first day of the class. But as we get into this, I want you to talk a little bit more. All right. Assignments are due by midnight Sunday, the week they are assigned. The differences are the three stories you're going to write, the sports cast assignment, um, the flip card, the talk show. There are specific dates those are assigned. Some of those I give you a couple of weeks. But the blogs, the sports focus, the discussion board, those are all due by midnight Sunday. Okay? They're going to be knocked a letter grade for every day late because we are in a deadline driven business and we have to start getting in that mindset of meeting deadlines. If you don't meet the deadline, We've got a hole in the newspaper. We've got a dead air on the radio. We cannot have that. Okay, so meet deadlines. See here some of my teaching philosophy, some of the, te the department's teaching philosophy, a little bit of miscellaneous information, my first subjects. Plagiarism, huge in our business. What is plagiarism? Taking credit for somebody else's work. So you just take what they wrote, you put it down, you put your name on it, you slap your byline on it. That is bad, bad stuff. That can get you fired in the real world. It can get you flunked in college. Don't do that. I will tell you that if you get into the sports PR business, plagiarism happens all the time as television stations or newspapers will take your news release, your game story, and run it verbatim in the paper. They won't put their byline on it. As a sports PR person, I was okay with that. There were many times the Daily Star Journal was 100% my stories because small town newspaper, one sports reporter, he's covering tons of stuff. I'm just gonna take, you know, Mules and Jennings both played this weekend. I'm gonna take what Joe wrote. We'll just run that in there with my pictures. I'm not gonna rewrite it. I was perfectly okay with that. 
because that way I got my story written the way I wanted it written. Okay? It's lazy from a journalist perspective. Don't take somebody else's work and just plug it in there. Right? All you have to do to avoid plagiarism is what? Psych. Say where you got it. Okay? Um, you can see the course assessment, assessment, so we line out these are the objectives for the course, and this is how we're assessing it. So, for example, students will be able to gather information and write sports stories for print and broadcast, including game coverage, features, and advances. It's our sports story. That's how we're assessing that. And the last thing on here is your schedule. If I have to make a change in the schedule, I will try to give you one week's notice. I don't perceive that being an issue this summer. Uh, we only meet for six weeks, so it should not be an issue this summer. If it does happen, I will give you as much notice as I can, okay? So you notice this week we're going to talk about, when we come back from break, sports and society, becoming a sports reporter. We'll focus on football and volleyball and how you cover those. Your discussion board post, it's discussion board one, who should pay. That's what we talked about a little bit ago. And then uh, when we get, before we get done today, I'll talk about your first game story or your game story, all right? Okay, questions, thoughts, comments? Is this kind of what you were expecting? Were you expecting just to go out and write? What? How about you in video world? Yeah, I'm kidding. <laughs> the joke's getting no better than that guy, so. Don't you don't mind me, Asia. All right. Let's take a quick break. Uh, when we come back, we will get into sports society and being a sports reporter, okay?